Welcome to the Stogie Geek Show, episode 116. This episode is sponsored by Mr. J's Havana Smoke Shop. Located here in Rhode Island, they have an outstanding selection of premium handmade cigars. And by A.J. Fernandez Cigars. A.J. Fernandez Cigars are handcrafted in Nicaragua using the finest materials. Brands include the San Latano, Pinolero, and A.J.'s recently released New World brand. Visit them on the web at ajfernandezcigars.com. And by... The Havana Cigar Club, located in Warwick, Rhode Island. It's a great place to enjoy a drink and a cigar. Stogie Geeks listeners can find a $5 off coupon on our website by clicking the HCC logo. And by Debonair Cigars. Visit stogiegeeks.com forward slash debonair for a list of retailers who carry debonair. Buy some today and get a little more debonair. And by Ocean State Cigars. Try the J. Grotto Series Cigar, including the Connecticut Shade Silk. And the limited edition J. Grotto Anniversary. Visit them on the web at OceanStateCigars.com for a list of retailers near you. Welcome, everyone, to this edition of the Stogie Geek Show. I'm your host, Paul Asadorian, joined on the lines via Skype by Mr. Will Cooper. Welcome, Will. Greetings, everybody. What's up, Will? We have with us hey. some, uh, some special guests in the studio Returning to the Stogie Geeks show live in studio, Mr. Glenn Case from Christoph Cigars. Welcome, Glenn. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. It's good to be back. The last yeah. time we talked to you guys, I was Skyping from my cigar room in my house. Yeah. So this yeah. is good to be this back. This is great. It's it, nice bro. to have you in studio. I'm glad you could come yeah. by. Thank you. We've got Todd from the Havana Club next door joining us as well tonight. Thanks, Paul. Welcome, Todd. Um, so, Glenn, I, uh, I wanted to you know, dive right into your interview and, and ask some questions and kind of get caught up. And coming out of IPCPR, you launched a new cigar blend, the Cristiano Maduro. So tell us about that project. Yeah, it was, um, look, at, it's, the market right now is uh, demanding something, a value price cigar, but it's got to be a very premium product. So we launched the ori- original Cristiano about a year and a half, two years ago. It's a natural Habano Criollo wrapper. And it took off. So this year we came out with the uh, Maduro. It's a Brazilian Maduro from Arapiraca. So you get big coffee, cocoa bean notes, but it's still that value price point. We're talking five fifty to seven dollars to eight dollars for a seven by seventy. Um, so it's just you it have was a seven seven by seventy in the line. Seven by you seventy. You went big, huh? Oh my goodness! Not that size matters. <laughs> I'm but when you I, talk value, right? That's the perception people have about oh, larger ring gauges. It's amazing, and you know what? It's uh, we can't make them fast enough. Mm. I am, you know, I. The fact that the market's demanding it, we're supporting it, and providing for uh, the market and what they want. So it's worked out great. Yeah, I'm. You know, I don't know. I'm kind of warming up to larger ring gauge cigars. <laughs> it's <A little>. really <laughs> a little. <I> mean, it's <laughs> really? slow. It's a slow process <laughs> for me. Oh, um, I'm a, listen. I'm a traditionalist. I love the Lanceros, Coronas, yes. uh, Le- uh, Petit Coronas. But again, you got to do what the market is wanting. So Absolutely. that's that's what we did. So what? I was, what was the wrapper? What kind of Maduro wrapper? It's a Brazilian Maduro from a region called Arapiraca. Nice, nice. So it's very. You did ar- that just so you could say Arapiraca. Oh my goodness, my friend! I speak very <laughs> little Spanish. <laughs> but, but that I'm, one just flows off the. Brother, <laughs> I got the tongue roll down. It's it's awesome. That's all I can fake. That's. <laughs> no, that's <laughs> great. That's great. Um, and so, what other sizes? Is a seven by seventy? So yep. Yeah. So we have a Robusto. We have a Toro. Mm-hmm. A five and a half by sixty and a seven by seventy. And it's just, it's now, rocking. Do those have those, uh, you kind of, I think you use a lot more of the closed foot than a lot of other people in the, the market. Is there a reason for that? Or You know, it's th- that, that closed foot or the uncut foot is a very traditional method of rolling Cuban cigars going back mm-hmm. centuries ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, that along with the fuma or the pigtail. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm infatuated uh, with Cuban cigars and traditional uh, bunching techniques and rolling techniques, and so that's why I came up with mm-hmm. what I did with the core line. Uh, the Cristania is not doesn't have a fumo or a pigtail, doesn't have the uncut foot. It's just a you know 
triple cap, beautiful cigar that's now full you said of the, the bunching methods too. Is it an N2 bar? N2 bar, N2 absolutely. Bar, just like the traditional Cuban cigars would be rolled. Absolutely. Very um, cool. It takes a lot more time to make it, mm -hmm. right? It takes, it takes a higher skilled buncher to roll it sure. or bunch it, but it's the right way to make a cigar. And this it's is just, that's why we love airflow, it. It's airflow, right? I mean, it's a tube. It it's is, airflow. exactly. Yeah. I mean, you get a, a nice ash, a perfect draw each time. Um, it's, again, more time consuming. Mm -hmm. But in my opinion, it's the right way to make a cigar. Now, I, I've, already, I've already taken away those characteristics from this cigar because I'm smoking it. But this is the GC uh, Signature Series. Yes, and sir. this had that... Um, is it? A, is it? A, do you call it a pigtail cap? If it's we, all, yeah, we call it a pigtail. Pigtail cap, yeah. and it had the the shaggy foot, so to speak, or the the wrapper that hangs off the end of the foot, exactly. which I like because it lets me taste the wrapper before I taste anything mm. else. So when I light it, I try and puff those first few puffs, so I get the taste of just the wrapper, and then can see that progression. Absolutely, and you get that initial light. You're right. It's and most of your flavor comes from the wrapper, as yeah. as we know, right? Yes. So when you light that up, you get that burst of flavor, that big coffee and that cocoa, mm -hmm. um, a little bit of spice. So, again, it's that traditional way of rolling a cigar, and you get that burst of flavor. This one, it's very good. I tell you what, I I asked you because right before the show, I'm like, I need something like medium full. And you hit the nail on the head with the, the strength <laughs> and flavor profile. That's why I didn't I want do to overwhelm do, my, my palate, but I've been smoking <laughs> today, so I didn't want something too light. So this this is perfect. This Good. is great. This is great. Good. <clears throat> um, now you've also announced some sampler packs. Tell me about those. Indeed. So we came out with a uh, humida pack. It's a four pack sampler, and there's three different samplers: the big bold Maduro, mm -hmm. which is my fuller body Maduros, and then we've got the bold spice, which is the medium medium plus spice. And then the natural, which is the milder, mm -hmm. um, and they're all self-humidified. They'll stay good on the counter outside the humidor for a good three months or more, and they're discounted. So the idea is provide a value to the customer, sure. have them try the cigar, and get an idea of what Christoph's about, you know, mm -hmm. the different flavor profiles and strength profiles. Nice, nice. Now, Very do you cool. have a uh, point of sale display for them yet, or...? Wow, look at the time. No, <laughs> not yet. Um, we, d we don't, but we're, we're going to work on it. I want to see how it goes at first. Sure. Um, you know, it's a value purchase. It's a great uh, sort of grab-and-go type yeah, product. Sure. It's great for the golfers. I was going to say it's a good golf, golf it's course. Yeah. awesome, awesome. And uh, I don't golf, but I had, if I had to envision myself on the golf course, I would probably pick up something like that. That's exactly what I want. Yeah. Or it's a gift item, you know, for the wives or the girlfriends yeah, looking to buy something. Yeah, good time the holidays, yeah. It's perfect. So... Uh, let's see how it goes, and I'm I'm certain that we'll come up with some sort of a, a POS display. <laughs> Sorry, Thanks for Glenn. the idea. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Glenn. <laughs> no, it's all good. <laughs> no, the who's listening? Um, we have a, a picture of it on the Stogie feed as well from IPCBR, so oh, nice. uh, we'll get that put into the show notes. Wow, no, you does guys that are big a, shots. <laughs> does that sample pack include the Galerones series? It does. There's a Galerones in each of the, the different packets. Oh, oh, so all your lines you can get in some a of these. I, absolutely. I got you. So it goes across all your lines. Most of them. Yeah, most it, of them. Yeah, okay. most of them. Right. I got you. So tell us about the Galerones series. The Galerones series has been a, um, really a, an experiment in, in playing with different tobaccos that I've never used before. And uh, these are made by Abe Flores mm -hmm. um, outside mm -hmm. of our factory. And so they've got a very different flavor profile. Um, a lot of tobaccos from Nicaragua, Esteli region, which I've never used. So you get more of that spice, that pepper. pepper. Yep. Um, there's one with a Cubra wrapper, which is very rare. It's Habano seed grown in Brazil. There's, uh, it, it provides a, a dimension of Christoph that no one's ever sort of tasted before. Sure. Right? So I give it a different look. When you look at the packaging, you look at the bands, a lot of gold foil, gold powder. The box is uh, black lacquer, piano finish, gold embossed. So I want to sort of separate it from mm -hmm. the core line. Sure. And so that's what we've done. Now you uh, seem to have used a lot of the Brazilian wrapper, well, at least the last couple of cigars you described. Brazil. Was there a reason for that? Or are you just a experimenting? Ab or? Absolutely. I mean, the Brazilian from uh, Arapiraca, to me, is it's all about the flavor, the sweetness, and the smoothness. It's very aromatic versus Matafina. So uh, everything I make is, in fact, from Brazil, Arapiraca region, mm -hmm. except for one blend, which in the Galerona series, again, a tobacco I haven't used is San Andreas, which is very hot right now. Mm. 
but everything I use is Arapiraca. The GC signature is Arapiraca. Mm. It's awesome. It's very good. Um, so you also launched the 685 Woodlawn as a limited production cigar. Now, where does the name Woodlawn come from? I don't know if I asked you that last time. I might have. <laughs> no. I want to hear it again. All right. Now that you're no, here no. in the studio, we're just we're doing it all over I again. I love we're this. This is scratch. perfect. This is perfect. <laughs> so the 685 Woodlawn is actually the address that I grew up at as a child. Oh, okay. There you go. So uh, it's got deep sentimental value mm -hmm. to me. That blend itself, I think, is the best blend I've ever made, in my opinion. Now, everyone's palate's different, right? But I think it's the best thing I've ever made. Um, I wish I could get more tobacco. It's Cubra wrapper. The binder's uh, Sumatra from Brazil. Mm -hmm. Again, very rare. It, it, it's the best thing I, I think I've made. And so is that whole line limited production? Yes. Okay. 2,000 boxes, 10 count boxes for the world. So that's it. There's n nothing One more. One size than or multiple sizes? One size. It's a Perfecto. Okay. It's a six and a quarter by 60 ring gauge Perfecto. It's awesome. I love that size. Yeah. Awesome. You get yeah. It's sort of a roller coaster when you smoke yeah, it, right? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, we've we've the, smoked a lot of perfectos on the show. We're yeah. Big fans of that size for sure. It's an excellent cigar too. Uh, it's really got some great traditional flavors in it. It's just wonderful smoke. That's why I like Will. <laughs> <laughs> so now I'll, I, <laughs> I'll have to get a box from behind me. <laughs> nice. So now are you you. Uh, so blending your cigars, uh, Nicaraguan, Dominican, and Brazilian, or do you like, does it go across the whole gamut? It's I mean, the, you've got a it, lot of different lines. Exactly. So. We've got 14 different blends in the line, um, and it covers Honduras, Nicaragua, Dominican, Brazilian, Ecuador, and Mexico, San Andreas. Mm -hmm. So each one is a blend. I, do, I don't do any Piero blends. Right, right. Uh, so for me, it's all about the balance and flavor and smoothness and complexity. If you get with a... Uh, start making Piero, it becomes one-dimensional in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's all yeah, about blank. I, I agree with that. Yes. Um, so, Glenn, you've also been very active in uh, cigar rights. So yes. what have you been doing uh, in that realm to help protect our rights as cigar smokers? Yeah, no, I appreciate that. Um, and look, at, we all need to get involved. And the sad part is there's a lot of complacency within this industry, whether you're a manufacturer, a retailer, or a consumer. Without a question. Right? I mean, it's, 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 it's unbelievable. insane. Yeah. Uh, so we need to all get involved. Um, I've spent a lot of time on, on the Hill this, this year, speaking with members of Congress, pleading our case, saying, look, this is an artisan product. This is not a Philly Blunt. It's not a White Owl. It's not a Grenadier. It's not snuff. It's not a cigarette. This is an artisan product. It's a celebratory product. And we need to stand up for this right to continue to enjoy what we enjoy. It's not addictive, right? The average cigar smoker smokes... On average, 50% smoke one to three cigars a month. The other 50%, three to maybe five cigars a week. It's, it's, it's a celebratory product. I wonder it's what percentage we're in. <laughs> smoking that's three or four a day. Three, three or four a, different a day. Category, but that's different. That's different. <laughs> No, but yeah, we, I mean, uh, so how's it been explaining that to them? Because some of the previous segments we've run on the show, uh, I've done some experimentation with the vape stuff. I've done pipe tobacco, right. and I've talked to my friends that are, you know do all kinds of other you know types of tobacco type products from e-cigarettes. Uh, how is it explaining that to people on on the hill? You know, it's it's an eye opening experience for the people that are hearing it. Oh, absolutely. You know, right? They they're just like, wow, we didn't realize that this was uh, so non addictive. Different, right? It's different. Yeah. Where it's you know parts of the cigar are six seven years old. Mm -hmm. um, so it's it's educating them on what is different about premium cigars versus everything machine made, else. everything machine else, made. dry cured cigarettes. And we're saying, look, you know, do your thing on that stuff, but we're different. Right. And so and you guys have done a very good job being on the hill. I mean, it seems made as much progress as anybody's ever made against, you know, the political machine sort of once their mind set up. You guys have done a great job of getting people to sort of realize the difference between premium cigars and everything else. Exactly. Where they draw that line, they may not draw it right, but at least they're going to draw a line, I think. Exactly. And you're right. And we'll know about a year from now what's what that looks like, what that line looks like. Yeah, yeah. So, but my point is, look, if sign up for CRA. Uh, mm -hmm. 
look, we're all in this together. <laughs> mm. Yeah, it's no. a freedom of choice, Paul, right? Aren't, aren't you? Yeah, absolutely, Paul. Aren't you doing a CRA on uh, November fourteenth? You were doing an all day uh, or half a day podcast and encouraging people to sign up for the CRA. Yeah. yeah. So my question for you, Glenn, was: uh, There's a local company, CVS, that recently pulled all their tobacco from their stores. Does that does that help us? Does that hurt us? Is it indifferent? It's, you know, in my opinion, CVS is the dry cured stuff, right? It's yeah. the yeah, Redditors, exactly. the Philly yeah. Blunts, it's the White Owls. It's stuff that we're not part of. No. And we, when we go to the Hill, we actually say, look, this is a Philly Blunt. This is a White Owl. This is not what we're about. We're about premium handmade cigars. Look, it's been touched over 225 times in the process mm-hmm. from start to beginning. The tobaccos, again, we're talking five to seven years old in a cigar. This is not what we're about in terms of the Philly Blunts, the White Owls, the dry cured stuff. So for CVS to do that, that's great. It doesn't affect our industry at all because we're not part of it. Yeah, yeah. We're not part of that. Right. It's a nice marketing technique, but that's pretty much right. Exactly. No, it's great positioning for them, but look, we're not part of it. Absolutely not. So, Glenn, you've blended a lot of different cigars, right? Did you ever? Do you ever get a blend and? Say, wow, I, I wish I could really bring this to market, but you just didn't have enough tobacco. So they're like, you know, they're sitting in your own personal humidor or uh, just a small run for friends or like an event cigar. Like, talk to me about that kind of process because you have so many lines and you've been in this business for a while. Yeah, so. no, that's a great question. I've, I've got a ton of stuff in my personal humidor at home and I, I look through it once in a while and I go, wow, wow. this is from, it's from seven and a <laughs> half years ago and I'll smoke and I go, wow, wow. <laughs> this thing is aged nice. This yeah, is perfect. Yeah. So, not uh, always the case, though. I'm sure some no, stuff no, pick no. up later, right? And it's like, oh, my God, that's <laughs> not what I expected. No, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, there's plenty of stuff. I'm always at a bl- I'll be in the factory in two weeks, and then I'll mm-hmm. be back there in about two and a half weeks after that. So I'm always blending, uh, which I love. That's the fun part of this business. I bet. But I've got an entire humidor of stuff that has been sitting there for a long time going, wow, this has turned out good or yeah. not so good, yeah, to your so point. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Future reference point. Exactly. And, and, and it's certainly an art form, blending a cigar. I tried it once when I was in the Dominican. It's, it's, it's beyond. Oh. It's truly an art form. And, I mean, even yeah. that to explain to the, you know, to, to, the, to the politicians, is it's an art form. It's no different than wine or anything else you're trying to blend. That's a perfect analogy. I mean, I use wine as an analogy all the time. And you're using different grapes from different regions, different countries. And uh, it's an art. There's no science behind it. No. And it's coming up with a blend that works for the general populace. So, mm-hmm. Which is why yeah. I'm no good at it. There's no <laughs> science. It's not a science thing. If, if it's not regimented in math, I'm yeah, done. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's certainly not. Will, did you have questions for Glenn? Yeah, so Glenn, I'll ask you one question. You know, so there's a lot of consolidation going on in the cigar industry right now. What, what are your thoughts about where we're heading right now? And what keeps you up at night as, in regards to that? Well, <laughs> the th- thing that keeps me up is what's happening in the industry and the FDA, uh, which is why I want to really impress on the consumers, the retailers, and the manufacturers to get involved and stand up for our rights to continue to do this. I mean, this is, it's an art form, like I said. Um, it's scary. That's the thing that keeps me up. Um, I've met with a number of people just this week that are very active in IPCPR and CRA, and it's the same thing that's keeping them up at night. And listen, there, if you think your voice doesn't count, you're wrong because it, it counts. It's, it's, right. it's amazing. So back on August 8th, we had the opportunity to send an appeal or commentary to the House, to the Senate, to FDA, and s- illustrate why we're different f- from everything else. The good news is we got 81,000, 82,000 petitions coming in. The bad news is we only got 81, 82,000 mm-hmm. petitions coming in. There's a lot more cigar smokers out there in this industry, but unfortunately, we're less than 1% of tobacco sales in this industry, so we're an easy target. It's all about politics. It's all about getting the vote. So guys, stand up, and women. Listen, this is, this is our right of choice. So do what you gotta do. Talk to your congressman, your senator. Sign up for CRA. We got to do this. This is going to go away. And frankly, I don't want to go back to corporate world because, <laughs> right? So this is our last, our last uh, chance to sort of come to to the House and the Senate 
and plead our, our case for this industry. Yeah. And one of the things that you'd be surprised, especially congressmen, how receptive they are when their constituents mm -hmm. talk to them about things. Mm. The problem we always get is the anti-smokers because people who are negative are always more vocal. Absolutely. In, 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 in any scenario. People who are enjoying it are sort of like, ah, just leave me alone and I'll ignore it and yep. maybe it will go away. And, and well, your congressman, your local congressman will always listen to you. Their officers will always respond. It's, it's what they do. They're local politicians in Washington. Right. So, I mean, senators, obviously you want to hit them too, but you'll get the air of your local congressman. Exactly. If it doesn't clear, clear Congress, it's not going, going to the anywhere. Senate. So <laughs> that's our first line of defense. Thanks. You're absolutely right. Yeah. Uh, so, Glenn, what do you have coming up next in terms ah. of cigars? I'd like to tell you, but I have to kill you if I tell you. No. All right. So maybe vacations. Okay. You, you okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're working on some small batch stuff. Yeah. Um, some things I'm always blending. Uh, that's why I'm looking forward to going back to the factory in two weeks, two and a half weeks. And where's your factory? In the Dominican in Santiago. Okay. Yep. But um, on the, f the, f the funner note, I travel a lot. Um, I've cut back. So I went from 220 days a year down to about 160 days a year. And that's cutting back. It's cutting back. Wow. Which <laughs> for me is a lot. <laughs> yeah, that's a so, lot for anybody. So tomorrow when I fly back home to Chicago, I'm packing up the travel trailer, and my wife and I are going camping. Nice. Now it's going to be 41 degrees I'm, in I'm Chicago. I would say that's one heck of a camping trip. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you should have done that in June. Yeah. <laughs> <Thanks>. Good point. <laughs> no, that's great. Um, so what other cigars do you like to smoke recently? I mean, we smoke – at the Stoey Geek Show, I try and get to 700 cigars that we smoke and review. Uh, I'm sure you smoke a lot of different cigars too. What are some of the ones that stick out in your mind lately that you've like outside of your own? Oh, your uh, own uh, the, the, the amazing thing about this industry is that there's so many good cigars out there. I mean, Padron, I got to admit, Anniversary 64, 26, Natural Maduro makes no difference. Mm -hmm. I love it all. I don't, yeah. I don't know what they're doing, but they're doing it right. Mm -hmm. uh, Alan makes great cigars. Um, uh, Dion, Pete. They're all making amazing stuff. So I smoke everyone's stuff all the time. Paul Joyle. I mean, he gave me stuff tonight to smoke. Mm -hmm. I, there's so many good cigars out there. It's, it's amazing. Absolutely. He probably didn't give you the Perfecto because I bought the last box yesterday. <laughs> I, I, I <laughs> hey, listen, there. No, I know a guy. <laughs> you know I, I, I know I a guy. He some. gave me one out <laughs> of his stash. Forget good. about it. Yeah. Perfecto is awesome. And <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No, there's so many good stuff out there. It's, it's amazing. Very cool. Well, Glenn, thank you very much for appearing on the Stoic Geek Show. You. It was wonderful to have you here in the studio. I'm glad you stopped by. Thanks so. for having me back, and it's great to be in the studio. Yeah, best awesome. of luck on your vacation. Thank you. <laughs> and Jack Taranio says you can hang around. He wanted to bust your chops. <laughs> oh, <laughs> All right. I love Jack. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're going to take a short. Yeah, we we'll know you have an event, but we appreciate the time so much. Yes, thank you. Absolutely. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it, guys. We're going to take you. a short break and come back, and uh, we're going to bring on Jack Taranio next, so stay tuned.